of these laws that we use, these civil rights laws, came out of this mass movement in the South. And, you know, a lot of us use these laws in the North and the West and, you know, California, but they started here. And it's really important for civil rights lawyers, I think, to learn about the South and, and, the, and how these laws came to be from the mass movement here. Um, and that's been really instructive. These uh, large number of majority black uh, counties is because black people were brought here to work the land as slaves. Um, and black people have been uh, uh, crowded into particular areas, not allowed to move into other areas uh, because of the history of racial discrimination in Alabama. And so that's, I think, uh, an important thing to remember, not just in terms of, um, you know, fair housing in the broader sense, but also how it can affect where people live, where they have access to basic services like uh, access to ID and things of that nature. We weren't taught the history of Selma, and I feel like that's very intentional, because if you know your own power, you're not waiting on someone to come save you. talked about the definition of racism, and people had an issue with that initially. And so we changed our framework to, um, it, it's called Beyond, Divide, and Conquer, uh, Unite, and Build. And so the framework uses, um, that it's, it says that race was a social construct created to divide us so that some could continue to have. And we, we use stories because it's harder to argue with someone's story. Poverty issues and every issue they take up, a lot of legislators are seeing that issue through a racist lens. And we have to find ways to frame the issue or make it a personal story so that we break through their initial bias uh, that they bring to the issues. Also a false narrative to me that racism is just bad for black people or people of color, and it's bad for most people, right? Because again, is it divide and conquers us when the, there's a racial wealth gap, but there's also a wealth gap, <laughs> right? And so um, President Johnson says, has this quote that talks about if you take the, I, I'm paraphrasing, the, the, the best white man, the lowest white man and put him against the best colored man, you not only could you uh, uh, take all the, pennies from the white man, he will empty his pockets for you, right? So this idea of the hierarchy of human value has worked for just a few. And so if we all realize that, then we'll begin to work together. We sort of judge each other about what's the best route, right? Um, and ultimately, we need all these different things. We need people fighting in the legislature. We need people fighting in the, the courtroom. And we also need people fighting on the ground. Every successful um, movement in this country took all three of those. Um, and I think part of why we continue to not move forward is because we're not doing that in concert with each other. Um, but also, we're not doing that cultural work. I think part of the cultural uh, problem in the uh, North, especially, is that people are so separated. And, um, you know, there's this, this powerful research on the effect of that separation on attitudes, um, particularly uh, in the white community, attitudes of racial prejudice, lack of racial tolerance, uh, stereotype. Um, but it's, but it happens on both sides of the, uh, of the divide, too. And I think um, what happens when neighborhoods and schools are integrated is kids grow up together, and um, they develop uh, friendships across racial lines. They develop a deep appreciation and tolerance for people of other races and ethnicities, and it becomes a very righteous cycle don't go to the same schools. So this this real physical separation between people, and there's never been, uh, there have been a few, you know, very big fair housing cases in Chicago and Baltimore and things like that, but there hasn't been the kind uh, that happened across the South and across the United States that have really uh, allowed for African Americans to, uh, to get back some of that wealth that they lost because of racial discrimination and segregation for uh, at least the first hundred years in which they were uh, freed from slavery. And so uh, I think that's a real missing piece of, of civil rights litigation, civil rights activism. Mm -hmm.